I'm not Mitch Connor, and early today, I was just uh, going over the news and stuff, and I went to RT.com, and just happened to find um, this photo at the bottom of the page for the picture of the day. It's from November 5th, though. Um, apparently, there was a million masks march by the anonymous group that was kind of worldwide. There's an article on it, and here's all the places it was. Apparently, I had not heard of this thing at all, you know. Drudge didn't care. I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> I just didn't happen across it. I guess you know, for all the places that I went uh, on the internet. Now, some. I, I hate to use the word synchronicity, but I don't have a better word for it. I'm not a Jungian, um, in reference to Carl Jung, who created the term synchronicity. But I don't. I don't know what else to use. Um, having come across this, I started looking into. Um, uh, anonymous and this million mask march thing but th this picture at first first thing struck me okay because he's sitting there with a peace sign next to a burning police car okay now later on in the day um i just happened to go back to one of my favorite youtube channels of all time christmas is a lie dot com um you can just type youtube.com slash xmas is a lie. X-M-A-S-S-I-S-A-L-I-E. Okay. And part five here. Alex Jones and Sandy Hook. Terrorism part five. Sorry. Well, this is in connection with something else that is in connection with Aryan Empire's videos. And, um, sorry, I, uh, Forgot about the beginning part, which it has to do with Guy Fox, because that's 15 minutes into the video. Sorry, I was on the thought of uh, Aryan Empires and some of his stuff. Um, if if you haven't heard, yeah, I don't think Sandy Hook's a hoax anymore. I used to, um, and I got a whole admission about it on my Google Plus from a couple of months ago. Uh, telling a personal story concerning somebody I know, um, a co-worker who's a friend and who is not known to be a liar by anybody he knows. I know people he knows too. And um, he uh, hung out in his freshman year, like a year or two ago, um, with this guy who was from Newtown, Connecticut, whose little brother went to that, was attending that school when it happened. Now, um, that's not to say there wasn't a cover-up. Just understand that, okay? The media covered it up too. But this whole hoax meme about it, that's a cover up in itself, probably. Though I thought I came to think that on my own, okay? And it wasn't because of channels like Free Radio Revolution or Professor Doom or whomever, okay? Those guys didn't influence me. It was the right when I saw when I saw the news contradictions and leading up to a week later, I saw Robbie Parker the day after, and I'm just like, why the hell is he laughing? And I'm still baffled by that. Okay, I, I have ideas about it, but that's not what this is about. Now, I recommend you watch this video in particular. It's the second link in the description. The first link link would be um, this one. Okay, from uh, Anonymous's website. But um, this video here goes into uh, how Guy Fox really was, okay? And that relates to this picture, okay? He was a terrorist working for the Vatican, okay? And if you want to know who's at the top of the pyramid, well, I just said the name of the organization. It's the Roman Catholic Church. As the Book of Daniel said, the... Uh, was it the last piece of Revelation? I'm, I'm going off the top of my head. I'm not great at quoting the Bible. But uh, the last beast will reign until the end. And it's pretty well established who the beasts are. And this Christmas is a lie channel documents quite well all that, including who is the Antichrist. If you never heard of Pope Sixtus III, well, I suggest you watch this terrorism series of his and you'll get who the actual Antichrist is. It's not somebody coming in the future. Nope. Sorry. What are the odds that, that that name means six, by the way, or sixth? So three sixes, six, six, six. And he lays out how that prophecy fits history properly in context. But anyway, back to Guy Fox. Like I said, he was a terrorist. What is this right here? 
This is terrorism. Okay. Yet he's holding up a peace sign. What a beautiful contradiction right there. Now, there is an interview on the article right here, um, which I believe I feature. Yeah, it's going to be the fifth link, I believe. Yeah, fifth link. And, uh, oops. In it, um, there's an interview down here, this video right here, which I also suggest you watch. Because I'm not going to do everything for you. Now, this right here is borderline terroristic kind of stuff. They're pulling down this fence. And there's police officers getting pissed off here. And I'm not saying the police are helping either. It's it's a complicated uh, subject here, you know. But um, the reporter interviews a guy... He was saying that, like, not all are violent, you know, but, like, these these guys are acting possibly over-aggressive. Um, and, and what happens when you act like that? Well, you lose rights. Police power grows stronger, you know, because they see a need for it. The powers that be, you know, even those that are not um, knowing the part of the pyramid, so to speak, okay, see a need for it, okay, because they need to keep order. It's their job to keep order. <clears throat> you know, I mean, tearing this down, that's not exactly peaceful, nor is this. This is destruction of property, vandalism. It's no different than any sort of riot, you know, Ferguson riots, Baltimore riots, okay? When that stuff's going on, what happens? You get more police power, okay? And you get more oppressive police, more paranoid police, just like when a police officer gets killed by um, a criminal. Oh, all the police officers have that much more itchier trigger fingers, Okay. So none of those actions help. It just continues to um, it continues the snowball effect towards more violence and more uh, disorder. See, a protest, okay, if it's completely peaceful, that's fine, you know. Oh, yeah, there's the agent provocateur factor, you know. I mean, there's, that's been going on for years. I'm aware of that completely. Okay, but these people aren't going through the courts, you know. They're not going through the proper channels. Protesting is not enough. It seriously isn't. If you want to uh, change for the sake of freedom, no. You have to do it for the most part intellectually. Like even with the start of it, with the American Revolution, yeah, it turned into war, and that was initiated by the British for the most part. Were, eh, yeah, there was a little bit of terrorism, you know, the Boston Tea Party, yeah. You could call that a little bit of terrorism, you know, a um, little bit of destruction of property, so to speak. But the American Revolution, you know, if you read the Federalist Papers, it, it started as an intellectual thing. Now, I'm not totally sure what I'm going to title this video, but really, watch this video right here. Alex Jones and Sandy Hook. Terrorism Part 5, Alex Jones and Sandy Hook. And this Christmas is a lie.com channel is fantastic and so is the website type in that for the website it took me eight months to go through it because he doesn't link a heck of a lot so i had to do searches and searches and i've actually bought books and anyway how do i close this stupid thing um it led me to uh this uh via this website right here which this actually is a pretty accurate article though there i do have um suspicions about anonymous you know especially when i see stuff like this okay that's not positive but yet this article right here is which came from um the million mask march Should i put that in there third link okay go to the third link and you'll find the links i think it's down a little bit below here I don't agree with every single one of these videos in here exactly, but, um, oh yeah, the real, right down here, above safety tip, the real reason why nearly everyone is in Syria. This article is pretty accurate, including the stuff about the gas pipeline. Okay. And in it, it includes this um, WikiLeaks cable. Um, and a quote from this RT article. Uh, from an interview with Julian Assange, and I don't completely trust Julian Assange. Same with Edward Snowden, okay? Um, there's an interesting documentary about Assange and um, his past, his upbringing, and even why he has this blonde hair, because he was part of a freaking cult and like, what was it, Australia? <gasps> Australia? But here's his quote. That plan was to use a number of different factors to create paranoia within the Syrian government, to push it to overreact, to make it fear that there's a coup. 
So in theory, it says, we have a problem with Islamic extremists crossing over the border with Iraq, and we're taking actions against them to take all this information and make the Syrian government look weak. The fact that it is dealing with Islamic extremists at all. Okay, so I've shown how, in the past, how that's basically happened. How um, they brought in these protesters and, you know, barely started with Jack Squat and it grew into this Islamic State thing. There's more to it than that, but... Um, which a tiny bit is covered in here. Here's a summary of the December 13th, 2006 um, cable. Uh, what's the... from Damascus. I can't remember the guy's name. Where is it here? I don't know. I can't remember what the guy's name is. Uh, particular general, if it even said. It, it, probably in the RT article. I'm not going to go back to it because I'm on limited time here. SARG ends 2006 in a much stronger position domestically and internationally than it did 2005. While there may be additional bilateral or multilateral pressure that can impact Syria, the regime is based on a small clique that is largely immune to such pressure. However, Bashar Assad's growing self-confidence and reliance on this uh, small clique could lead him to make mistakes and ill-judged policy de decisions through trademark emotional reactions to challenges, providing us with new opportunities which this sentence right here indicates that they intend to make that happen, to manipulate it. For example, Bashar's reaction to the prospect of Hariri Tribunal and to uh, publicity for Qaddam and the National uh, Salvation Front borders on the irrational. Additionally, Bashar's reported preoccupation with his image and how he is perceived internationally is a potential liability in his decision-making process. We believe Bashar's weaknesses are in how he chooses to react to the looming issues, both perceived and real both perceived and real, such as the conflict between economic reform steps, however limited, and entrenched corrupt forces, the Kurdish question, and the potential threat to the regime from the increasing presence of transiting Islamic, Islamist extremists. The increasing presence of transiting, transiting Islamist extremists, I repeat. Which, who's bringing that about? I think you know the answer. This cable summarizes our assessment of these vulnerabilities and suggests that there may be actions, statements, and signals that the USG can send that will improve the likelihood of such opportunities arising. So right in that, they indicate that they're going to manipulate it. These proposals will need to be fleshed out and converted into real actions, and we need to be ready to move quickly to take advantage of such opportunities. Once again, they plan to manipulate it and take advantage of it. Many of our suggestions underline using public diplomacy and more indirect means to send messages that influence the inner circle. And summary. And I'm going to read just a little bit more. As the end of 2006 approaches, Bashar appears in some ways stronger than he has in two years. The country is economically stable, at least for the short term. Once again, insinuating what will be in the following sentence, um, pretty much a straight-up admission, at least for the short term. Internal opposition the regime faces is weak and intimidated, and regional issues seem to be going Syria's way, from Damascus' perspective. Nonetheless, there are some long-standing vulnerabilities and looming issues that may provide opportunities to up the pressure on Bashar and his inner circle. Like I said in the next sentence, they're admitting right there that they intend, they're intending to overthrow him here, okay? Regime decision-making is limiting to limited to Bashar and an inner circle that often produces poorly thought-out tactical decisions and sometimes emotional approaches, such as Bashar's universally derided Ox 15th speech. Some of these vulnerabilities, such as the regime's near irrational views on Lebanon, can be exploited to put pressure on the regime. I'm just going to stop there. You, you can read the rest if you want. Um, that is going to be the In the Million Mask March, about halfway down the page. Sorry, it's over here. Right about here when you see this dev. Oh, actually, it's the bottom of the page. Top link here, just below the Guy Fox mask. Now, one last thing concerning this Christmas is a lie channel. Um, and I highly suggest you watch every single video this guy's got, okay? Though he's wrong about the global warming thing, I'm convinced. And I've tried to get him to discuss that with me, but he has yet to do it. I've only given really one chance so far and second chance pending. Um... Anyway, he really lays out the origins of terrorism and even the Vatican connection to Islamic extremism, okay, that goes back hundreds of years. Don't think it's the Jews. It's Pope's NWO.